Hi, and welcome to another Gluon Cloud Link screencast. Today, we'll explain how to configure Gluon Cloud Link and allow a mobile application to retrieve data from a Stack Overflow using a request with a search keyword provided by the mobile app. While this is a very simple use case, it explains how the decoupling works between mobile functionality on the mobile app and enterprise configuration on Gluon Cloud Link. In this screencast, we will create a mobile application to retrieve questions from Stack Overflow. We will use Gluon Dashboard to get the credentials for the app and we'll explain how to use it to create remote functions on Gluon Cloud Link. This tutorial is based on the functions mapper sample that you can find as for other samples at gluonhq.com support samples. Its code is available at the Gluon GitHub repo github.com slash gluonhq slash gluon samples and its documented tutorial is available at docs.gluonhq.com slash samples slash function mapper. To create this sample, you will require the Gluon plugin for your IDE and a valid subscription to Gluon Cloud Link. Check other screencasts on how to get one if you don't have it already. We'll start by opening the Gluon dashboard in the browser. Once you sign in with your credentials, there are a number of things that you can do here but the one that we want to show in this screencast is the API management. We can easily create functions that call into external services and that can provide data to your mobile applications. To start, we will create a function that will query Stack Overflow for some searches on particular terms. First, we give the function a name. For instance, we call it Search Stack Overflow. For the endpoint, we'll use the REST API provided by Stack Exchange. So the URL will be api.stackexchange.com with some default query parameters. This is a public service that doesn't require authentication. We will deal with authentication in later screencasts. We did not specify which search term we wanted to search for because that is a parameter that should actually come from the mobile client. We will add this parameter here it's a query parameter and its name is tag, as that is what StackChange requires. We don't need to provide a value as it will be passed by the client app later on. But we can test now the endpoint by adding a test value and checking we have a valid response, like a 200 code and a list of questions. When this is done, we can go to our IDE and using the Gluon plugin create a new project. Let's get started by creating our mobile application first. With the use of the Gluon plugin for our IDE, we can create a project with a pair of default views. Let's select New, Gluon, and the Glisten Afterburner project template. Next, let's name it Function Mapper, set the package name. Next, now we set the views names, main and detail. We click Finish, and a full project is created with two default views. If we click Run, we can see what we have so far. This will be the main view, and this will be the detail view. Now that we have our default project ready and running, we'll start modifying it by adding a service package and a remote service class to manage the remote function calls. But before adding those calls, we'll need to add the Charm Cloud Link client dependency at the build gradle file in order to access the Gluon Cloud Link from the mobile app. After adding the dependency, we save and reload the project. And considering that we'll download some images from the Stack Overflow responses, we'll add the CAS service selecting from Gluon Mobile Settings, the CAS plugin on the left, and adding it to the list on the right. Back to the service class, we will create a data client to access the Cloud Link using operation mode Cloud First. In order to get the data client connecting the Cloud Link, valid credentials are required. So we access again the Gluon dashboard. Now we click on the last link, Credentials, and under the Client tab, we will find a pair of key and secret tokens. While you can copy them, a better option is downloading the config file and storing it in your project under Source, Mine, Resources folder. Going back again to our service, we can now do the request to retrieve the Stack Overflow responses. We'll define a remote function based on the same name we used before, search Stack Overflow, and adding 
a parameter based on the tag param. Now we'll ask the data client to create an object data reader with this function and the type of object. This object will be retrieved and converted into a gluon observable object. This is all it takes to generate an observable object from a remote endpoint. With our service completely defined, we can inject it in the main presenter. By using injection, we'll have an instance of the service that we'll use to retrieve the observable object with a list of responses. We can give it a try with the default presenter. We go to the button action handler and we'll use remote service to call search stack overflow with a string class type and Java as the value. The return object is a gluon observable object, so we can listen to the changes of the initialized property. When this object is initialized, we'll print the response. Now we run the app and click on the button. After a short while, we get a long list of items with their response. So what happened under the hood? We call the remote service to call the search stack overflow function and we supply the return type and the value for tag that we set on the dashboard when defining this function. Let's make it a little bit nicer. Given that we'll be dealing with the stack overflow JSON responses, our model should have some of the fields in those responses. So we'll add to the project the model classes from the repository. We'll add the stack owner class containing the display name and profile image fields. We'll add the stack entry class containing the title, the owner, among others. And this will be the stack response class with a linked list of stack entries. Back to the presenter class, we'll change the string type to stack response. What will happen then is that instead of getting the raw JSON string, then the Lion Gloom Cloudlink client framework will try to convert the JSON string into a stack response Java object. If we run the app again, we'll see that we get a list of responses, and this list could be added to a list view control, for instance. Let's edit now the default fxml views to include this control. We open first main fxml with the scene builder 8.3.0, replacing the default content with a charlist view control and a combo box to add some default tags. Notice that the scene builder includes a blue mobile panel with the controls that you can use to define your views on a mobile app. Back to the views package, before modifying the presenter, we'll add an util class to include the cast service. In the main presenter, we will add the charmless view instance, including from the repository the list cell implementation for both the header and the responses that are required for both the header cell factory and the cell factory of the control. And we also include some predefined tags. Now when the observable object is initialized, we'll pass the list of responses to the charmless view items collection. Finally, let's add some CSS styling and run the app again, testing the latest changes. You should see the responses nicely formatted in the Chaplist view. Time to deploy the app on your mobile device. In this case, we'll use an iPad, so we select Launch, Launch iOS device. And in less than a minute, the app will be deployed. So let's open the app. Again, we select Attack. And now we will see the Stack Overflow responses in the Charlie's view control. In this screencast, we saw how we could easily define remote functions in the Gloom Cloud Link using the dashboard, and how we could call those functions from a Java client application without the need of a specific HTTP REST calls, but just using a service to do the requests that returns an observable object. The important thing to remember here is that you can create a Java client application that talks to remote backend systems without having to configure the remote backend in your client application. For that, You'll use the dashboard, allowing a clean separation between backend and client. This is all for now. Stay tuned for more screencasts where we will highlight more features of the Gluon Cloud Link. Thanks for watching.